torsional pendulum. Torsional, torsional pendulum. Um, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's the best I got. Again, these songs are lame, but they're the best I can think of at the time. I spent nearly a millisecond preparing for that song too. So that's again, I apologize profusely. The uh, torsional pendulum. Um, we've talked about two other kinds of pendulums in class. We've talked about the simple pendulum, where we have that thing here with a length L. And we said, again, that A equals negative omega squared X, because that's true of anything that is in simple harmonic motion. In this case, A is equal to G sine theta over, yep, yeah, that's it, okay. And that in our case, sine theta is gonna be, for small angles, equal to x over l. So, sine theta equals x over l. So we have g x over l equals negative omega squared x. That means that omega equals the square root of g over l. Okay. Oh, squeeze it in there, but just barely. Okay. Um, if we look at a physical pendulum, this is simple. This is physical. If we think about a physical pendulum, in this case, we're going to say that the center of mass is here. They're going to tell us that. And at some distance d, and I have a moment of inertia i. Well, I can't divide those away anymore. But if it, for small angles, if this is theta. Okay. For small angles, well, we're still going to say a equals negative omega squared x. That describes everything in simple harmonic motion. We're going to use the rotational version of it, which is alpha equals negative omega squared theta. We just divide, said a equals r alpha and x equals r theta and divided out the r's. Um, we know that from Newton's second law of rotation that that, equal, that alpha equals torque over the moment of inertia. And that the torque that comes from this is mg sine of theta times d. And that since the uh, and that since the angle is small, the small angle approximation, that sine of theta equals theta. So m g d theta equals negative omega squared oh, over i. Equals negative omega theta. So then omega is going to be m g d over i square root. Okay. That's stuff we've done before. Now we're going to look at a torsional pendulum, which actually is a slightly easier case, believe it or not. Um, it's a, uh, basically, <clears throat> basically we're looking at something like, a, basically we're looking at something that like a circle. Some sort of, usually it's circular, it's some sort of spring inside of it. Like this. And when you pull it to the side, it tries to bounce right back to the center. And the spring that's connected to it provides a torque. And the torque is equal to some constant k theta. And it's really just the same. It's uh, similar to f equals kx. But this is going to be different. Kappa is going to be newton meters. So it can match up with the... Uh, work there. Well, I've been working on where this is used. It's a uh, it's actually used quite often as a uh, in the mechan as a mechanical in, in in a mechanical watch. The spring, you know, you you wind it. Basically, you turn it to the side and it makes this thing turn and that turning is going to wind this up. When you release it, it's going to slowly release, governed by this thing over here. <coughs> Excuse me. 
and the gear set up to regulate how quickly this is allowed to come back to its original position. Okay. When you wind a watch, all you're really doing is you're taking this thing and wrapping it around. Okay. I was going to draw that out for you and pull old John DeVries on that, but you know, eh, just didn't seem like the right thing to do this time. Sorry, John. Okay. Well, again, it follows the same rules we had before. Of course, it's going to have a moment of inertia I which if it's a disc is going to be your one half m r squared and all that stuff but it's going to follow exactly the same rules as the other so we set up um, it's rotational so we can right away go to alpha equals negative omega squared theta and this time we know we can use Newton's second law for rotation again and say that this is torque over the moment of inertia okay. and this time we have an exact we have an exact expression to replace that with so it's going to be kappa theta over i equals negative omega squared I, theta and you can see pretty easily that this is going to, I'm going to call it negative for all those. I don't think I did that at the beginning, but same kind of thing. So in this case, omega squared is going to be the square root of kappa over the moment of inertia. And that means that the period is going to be 2 pi, the moment of inertia, divided by kappa. Let's check those units, just make sure that we that they turn out the right way. We know that moment of inertia is kilograms mm, kilograms meter squared. It's going to be divided by kappa, which is Newton meters, or kilograms meter squared over second squared. Well, those divide away. We end up with one the square root of 1 over 1 over second squared, which is seconds. We win. That's basically the whole deal with rotational inertia. It's a short one, especially compared to my last ones, but it'll hit the spot, baby. All right, and good luck with the problems.